I'm going to start off with a background layer. So I'm just going to rename that BG for background. And the reason for having a background layer is so that you can place things there that you don't want to animate. That's just like your setting, your scene. So I'm just going to grab a rectangle. If you want to change the color of the rectangle, you go to the fill color. Let's go with um, say a light green. And the outline of it, you want to probably match up as well. So I'm going to match that up as well. I'm going to put that there. I'm just going over the, a little bit, doesn't matter. And once we've got our background, I'm just going to get another square and put in a sky. I'm going to add another layer and I'm going to swap the layers around. So I'm going to put that one at the top. And I want this background to extend all the way across to however many frames I do, so maybe 30. But for now, I'm just going to leave it shorter because when you're testing it, you don't want the animation to play through all the background. You'll see what I mean. So let's rename that as action because that's where all the action is going to happen. Did I lock that background layer? No, I definitely want to lock that so that I don't accidentally go moving the background pieces around. So this is the first frame. I'm just going to get an ellipse. I'm going to make that um, black and let's do that again. If your circle is bad, just hold down the shift key and you can see that that's keeping that circle the right shape. So this is a bad example of a stick figure. It's too skinny and the arms and legs are all wrong. You don't put arms at the middle of your torso and legs are certainly longer than that. So let's command Z to undo that. Um, a good stick figure, you want to have a little bit thicker, so maybe around there. And with arms, I would go from closer to the neck, so to create what looks like shoulders. Now watch this. With that path cursor, see how we've got these little lines that pop up and little circles here? If I click on that line, I can put in little bends. For some reason, it doesn't look like the pointer is actually on the lines, but in actual fact, the pointer is touching those lines. And now it looks like he's facing the other way. I'm going to add a new frame. Click on that. Where did it go? Well, he's on the first frame. He's not on the second frame. That's not very helpful because you want to see where it is so that you know what you're going to do for the next one. So over here we've got this thing called onion skinning. So we turn on the onion skin and that's a shadow of the previous frame. And you can see that there with these. You can extend these onion skins out further as well. So I'm going to put that there. So for my next frame, I'm just going to go back to the first frame, use the cursor and I'm going to select all those pieces. Command C for copy, or you can copy up here. Command V for paste. Oh, no, 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 not paste. I want to go to my next frame and then paste it. Okay, so now that's put it in exactly the same spot. And then all I need to do, rather than drawing it entirely from scratch each time, go back to this and do some slight movements like this. Copy that, Command C. Or if you're using a PC, Control C. Go to the next frame, Command V for paste, Control V, and then go back to our path cursor and then make some more movements. You can adjust these as well. Um, a bit floppy. A bit floppy, a bit floppy, a bit floppy, a bit floppy. That's too much. Notice how the movements or the, the space between movement is fairly minor. Stick with that. And I want to see what the first frame looked like as well. So I can actually do that as well. I can extend it back. So I can see that that arm's moving in the same direction, that arm's moving in that direction. Oh, and the feet need to do something. Oh, the legs. Now it's getting really silly. Now we've got three frames here, three in the background, three in the top. Let's play it and see how it looks. Okay, I don't know what that is, but it's something. And then if you want him to throw a ball, simple enough, just grab another object. You can actually import images from the web as well. So you can go and grab a ball from somewhere and insert that in if you want to. Um, I'm just going to use another color ellipse. I'm just going to put that there. Actually, I should probably have that on frame one. 
paste. Put that there like that. Frame two, paste. Slight movement from the first frame. Frame three, paste. Put that there like that. Now let's watch it. All right, now we're getting somewhere. When you, if you're going to throw the ball or something like that, or kick the ball, whatever it is, um, you want to have a consistent movement. So if I wanted to get him to throw it up, I'll see if I can do this really fast. So next frame, I'm just going to copy all of that into each frame now. So if I was throwing that up, I would try and throw it at an even space or an even speed and just look at the gaps and keep it even. So watch what I mean. So uh, maybe half a ball space between each one. And there's a little circle there in the middle. So you can actually sort of line up the edge of the ball with the circle. Seems to work well. And because I've got that um, onion skin on, I can see the, traje the trajectory a hard word to say, of the ball as we go. I can extend that back even further. All right, let's play it. It's a little weird, this, this part, but the, the ball seems to be moving pretty smoothly. If I wanted that ball to go faster, I would just have a bigger space between the ball. I could go um, a full ball space, and you will see that the ball will go a lot faster. I'm just going to throw that off the screen. Okay, let's watch that now. That's even better. Ball's moving smoothly still, but it's moving a bit faster. And then if I'm not happy with the frame rate, I can just go up to the, um, the settings. And the frame rate is set at 12. Let's put it at 24, which is a standard movie frame rate. Apply, and let's watch that. Now, when you've finished your animation, all you need to do is go up to the export button, click on export, and give it a name, and will go with GIFs because animated GIFs will go onto your website really easy and they look great. Um, also, anytime you want to, you can press the save button and what it does is it saves a file to your computer that you can then load up any other time.